Nikon will soon be announcing the predecessor to their awesome D810 camera. So what are its specs and what will it all be about? Let's talk about it. First off, the name. They first came out with the D800 and then the D10, so common sense would tell you this should be the D820. But Nikon sometimes does it a little bit different, like the 700 series, they jump straight to the 750, so this body could easily be the D850. In the end, the name doesn't matter, it's all about the specs and how the camera operates. But if it was up to me, I would love for it to be the 820, just so it's easier, it's easier to remember mentally. The number one thing I'm most excited to see is the megapixel size, the size of the sensor. When the D810 was first brought to market almost exactly three years ago, the 36 megapixel sensor was absolutely huge and a game changer in photography. If you didn't want to jump up to the medium format cameras, which are astronomically expensive, but you still wanted a huge amount of megapixels, the D810 was the only way to go. But like I said, that was three years ago, so competitors have not only caught the D810 in terms of the number of megapixels, but in many times they've actually surpassed it. So what am I looking for in the 820 or 850? I'm looking for lots and lots of megapixels. At an absolute minimum, somewhere in the 40s, mid 40s. But I would absolutely love if it went much, much higher. 50 or 60 megapixel, that's probably not gonna happen. But it should be somewhere in the range of 40 to 45 megapixels. For those that are worried about file size, what I say to you is, who cares? Nowadays memory cards are so fast, they're so cheap, they're so big, it doesn't really matter. Storage is super cheap, so whenever I see the giant file sizes for RAW, it doesn't really bother me. Frames per second is incredibly important for sports photography, nature photography, even if it's in your backyard photographing your family or your kids jumping in a pool or something, you want as many frames per second as possible. The D810 is about 5 frames per second. If you lower the image quality, add a better grip on there, you can get up to 6 or 7, but really who wants to lower the image quality? So straight out of the box, max quality on the new body, 820, 850, I'm looking for somewhere between 6, 6.5, or 7. I'd be happy with one of those. It's not going to touch the D5. That's a completely different market, completely different price point. But it needs to come a little bit more competitive than what it was in the past. The autofocus system should be top of the line. It should be exactly what's in the D5. I'm looking for better ISO as well. The D810 wasn't bad, it was actually pretty good, but you've never heard somebody say, oh, I'm shooting 6400 ISO and it just looks too clean. That just doesn't happen. You can never have too high of quality ISO. There's never and there never will be too good of ISO. ISO improvement will always be welcome and it's always gonna be one of the top three or four things that you look at in a new camera. Another aspect of the next generation camera people are gonna be looking for is the tilted screen. This isn't as important to me as I know it is to some other people, but it is really nice to have. My first foray into the tilted screen was with my D750, and I've actually found it more helpful than I thought it would be. I'm not a huge fan of just spraying and praying, but if there's a huge crowd, sometimes it is nice to be able to tilt the screen down, hold the camera up in live view, and still be able to get somewhat of an idea of what you're shooting. Now when you're shooting video, it is great. You can go down nice low, like I said a second ago, you can go high. So for video, it is much more helpful than it is photos. Speaking of video, it should jump from 1080, which is what the 810 was, to 4K. That's what's expected, and that's pretty standard at this point. The D810 will have two card slots. It's a matter of what the two card slots are that people want to talk about. It'll probably wind up being an SD and an XQD, which is fine. Like I said, I prefer the double SD, but it's not too big of a deal. I just personally feel like the SD soon is just going to dominate the market. Many times when the next generation camera hits the market, the prices of new unused cameras that it's replacing will drop, creating an awesome opportunity to pick up a great camera. And then there's the people who will be picking up the new camera and then want to sell off either the D800 or D810, flooding the market, and when the market floods, the prices drop, creates an awesome opportunity to pick up those cameras on the used market at a great, great price. Speaking of price, right now the D810 is running about $2,800. So I would expect the next generation camera to run in about the $3,000 range or probably a little bit more. Nikon should be announcing this camera very soon in the next week or so. It'll be very interesting to see what they come out with and the actual specs of the camera. It'll also be nice to see what they officially named the camera so I can quit saying D850, D820, or whatever the heck it is. So that's about it. If you have any questions, you can comment below or you can message me. Be sure to subscribe, and thanks for watching.